okay, mom. Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> We're back. In case you guys have not noticed, the setup looks a little different today. The setup looks a little <laughs> I'm different. I'm here. <laughs> We've got someone extra special in the hot seat. Oh my God. We are so excited to have you with us today. I'm so excited to be here. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you don't already know. If you don't, but why do you not know? Do you live in, under a rock? Where are you living? In a where, bubble? Where you live? Um, <laughs> you guys are making me feel so nice right now. <laughs> Keep going. Okay. <laughs> you want to walk around with us in your pocket? <laughs> we have our very own special Himali in the building. Woo! Um, I'm gonna do just a quick, quick introduction. Um, we, she yeah, say more nice are, stuff. Yeah. <laughs> we Hina and I feel like we are literally standing on the shoulder of a giant in the industry. Oh my god. We are talking so about sweet. somebody who has broken South Asian norms that we are talking about breaking breaking the glass ceiling we are talking about somebody who is talented in all aspects social oh, media yeah. content creation makeup fashion icon and a trendsetter as we know you yep. guys can already tell from the fit the, the fit, fit is fitting <laughs> the fit is fitting welcome on the show i'm gonna welcome. cry that was so nice <laughs> thank you we are so so excited to have you so excited same. I'm excited to be here. Yay. We're so excited that Hina has a very special request segment. You guys, let's hear it. <laughs> I had to bring it back, okay? <laughs> Everyone's been asking me to do another one, okay? <laughs> so obviously, y'all know when we got a guest as good as this one, we got to include her in the segment. Mm -hmm. And the segment today is Fazul or Fire. Woo! I can't like, wait. Hey, I can't wait for this. this. This is my favorite segment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so how we're gonna do it this time is i also have a couple of things that i'm gonna ask Amazing. so when i ask then you guys give your responses and then done, when asks, deal. then we will give our response. perfect mixing it up a little bit who's going right. first? Go first okay here we go all right I'm nervous okay okay, <laughs> okay. fazul or fire 600 people at your wedding fazul fazul, fazul. i can't i like no Cut that's it. a no for me i need to see the people in the crowd and like be able to recognize them. If I don't know. And the worst is when they like all want to take a picture with you. Like for what? Yo, does anybody, did anyone's mouth like freeze up? Yeah. Smile. True. Like you're just like, I'm sitting with a smile. My cheekbones hurt. Thank so you. I'm used to being in front of the camera. So I'm used to the, like the constant smiling. My husband was, he was like, I can't, <laughs> he was dying by the end of it. Like we got into the car straight face the whole time. He's just like, he's like, I can't do this. I'm like, it's a lot. It is a lot. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. Overwhelming. Yeah. And you're just sitting like you're hot on stage. I you're burning. A thousand pound dress. You want to get your pajamas on. Also, I wanted to eat the food. Yo. 100. And yeah. Did you eat the food? No, I didn't. I didn't. Well, I didn't even get to eat the food at my wedding. And also, it was like, I don't even know you. Like, yeah. what am I gonna do with this yeah, picture? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, you're never gonna see the picture. Mm -hmm. right? I'm never gonna use the picture. Yeah, so why true. are we doing this? Yeah. Why, like, why do printing these? But why <laughs> does why does your family's family come on the stage for the picture? That's what I, I want to know. know. I don't why? Know. I don't understand that. It's okay, too much. Go for it. Okay, your turn. Mine is Elaichi and Jai. Hell no. Or fire. Azul. Wait, what is like that? It. What is cardamom? It? Cardamom and Jai. I'm saying Fazul. You're saying Fazul? It's a freaking grenade in there, yo. Like, come yeah. on. Yeah. I'm going like, to say Fazul. I don't know if I like cardamom. Like, it's, it's a, a bit little much. too much. Yeah. I'm so I sorry agree. for offending the masala chai lovers. I know. It's a, Yeah, it's a bit much it. for me. I'm with you yeah. guys, too, because I think it's fire. You think Alechi is fire? Ooh, so You're good. You're telling me that, uh, like, cardamom in, like, your... You, it's not a bomb <laughs> like you know you're drinking your chai and all of a sudden this big glob of like cardamom comes yeah, in your no, mouth i can't do it when you make an ig yeah chai, i know okay? you strain it you, and you have to or open the pod and you just i add the i get it you don't add the whole I, thing i get it <laughs> however the flavor is a bit much it's so good like i'm a simple chai girly you know like you just gotta make me some jaw with like we don't need the extra stuff i'm not a masala chai girl i'll have it if I, desperate times <laughs> Desperate times I'll have the masala chai, but like honestly, I don't need that. To be I don't need fair, that. I'm not even like a chai girl. Like I 
only drink dry when I want to dip stuff oh, yeah. in it. Like I'm the a cake dipper, rust. and then I'm like, there's like a little bit left, and I'm like, Mom, you want this? Yeah. Like it has like all the cookie crumbs oh. and all the shit. I'm like, I can't yeah. stand the cookie crumbs in like, my chai. There you go. If I got the cookie crumbs in my chai, you're upset. I'd be like, throw this chai out. <laughs> I don't want this shit. <laughs> I don't want this chai. Okay. You know, I also really like a lychee in my coffee. Okay. No. It's like, no. A, it, yeah. It's That's weird. Turkish coffee and like most Arabic coffees okay, actually, have okay, cardamom no. in, their, in their coffee. Interesting. I've never had Turkish coffee, but I have had like Turkish Same. tea. Mm, and it's minty. good i've never had it either. but i've never i've never tried the coffee thing okay. I, I don't know if i would like that but i love the flavor of cardamom and like sweets and things mm. okay okay all okay, right next, next one, one. <laughs> they see men that rev their engines 30 times that is my biggest oh, no. pet peeve. <laughs> Fazool. Fazool. i hate why does your car need to be loud why why, why does for why what do, why do the brown men in brampton oh, do this it makes all me so mad, Dodge so mad. drivers oh my Listen god up. the jeep wranglers <laughs> It's not the dot. It's the it, Jeep Wranglers. I <laughs> cannot deal with loud cars. Yeah. For what? For, For what? what? For somebody what? answer her question. Why? Uh, Why is that happening? We're trying, we're trying to, sleep. to sleep. For real. And like even during the day, I hate it. it. Like what? What? Like what do you what? need what all that loud noise purpose? for? And like the Tim Hortons parking lot. Like, who yeah. are you impressing? The and like, un- don't your ears hurt? Like, yeah. if it sounds that loud, from how does it sound on the inside? Right. And you're driving around like that. Oh. Yo, that's Trinity insane. Commons. Trinity Commons and Courtney Park. That's this all you plaza near your God. house. Yeah, okay. No, no, the, the Sheridan Plaza. Oh, don't even. Oh my God. What don't happens in there. that plaza? The Sheridan Plaza. There's like a col- Sheridan, Sheridan College. College. Okay. There's a plaza there. Oh my God, that Sheridan. They are so creepy there. I went oh. to the library there one time, like back like years ago when I was yeah. at university. Me, it was me and two guys. Yeah. And I don't know if they've ever seen like a woman with two <laughs> guys before, but like I'm not even joking. We walk into the library, <laughs> all heads turn, and they're looking at us. And like my two guy friends were like, they were shocked because yeah. they were like, yo, everyone's like what? looking at us. <laughs> and I'm like, welcome to Brampton. Like, what? I'm like, that's what happens when you're a woman in Brampton. Everyone's just constantly Facts. staring it's, at it's you. It's definitely weird. And though. I was like, it is so weird. And they were like, this is so uncomfortable. And I'm like, welcome to my life. Yep. Like, that is, <laughs> that's what it I is. Did in the life. Yeah, literally. <laughs> it's so, and, and to have like two guys next, because they were on either side of me too. Yeah. 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 They were like, I was like, it's probably even worse. They were just like, oh my God, this girl is like. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> what's she doing? Yeah, what is she what's doing? happening? What's the backstory yeah. behind that? I'm like, I'm no, just I'm trying just... to pass economics. <laughs> Please. Like, Yo, all I'm thinking in my head is that Imran Khan song, The Amplifier. Oh! <laughs> you know, those oh funny. God. God. That was the song. That, that was the song. song. That was fire. That was, the song is fire. It the was song fire, fire, but it was overplayed at one it point because so I can't. Overplayed. Yeah. And the way that these boys would like crank up that tune oh and drive God. their like cars. Yo, I'm not gonna lie. I didn't have my license when it came on. The way I would sing that song, like I'm driving. I would sing that song too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm just like, I don't know what a woofer is, but <laughs> <laughs> throw that in there, you know? Like, <laughs> sure. Sure. Oh I my god, know. that takes me back. I totally Doesn't forgot it? about that song. <laughs> Bob, that was a that was that's a fire song. <laughs> okay, you go. Okay, my next one is middle school dances. Fazul or fire? Oh, oh I don't even know what I would say. I would say Fazul. I mean, they were like, mid. can I say like half and half? Yeah, okay, I would say half and half. half. Yeah, because okay. it was like mad awkward. Yeah, mad awkward. Yes. It was awkward. It was so. hella awkward. But like. It's also an experience. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's an experience. But the weird part was, like, your teachers are all up in there. Yeah. Like, and you're just like, Mr. Whoever, do I need to see your Brock dance moves? I do not. Okay? Like, I mean, some of the songs that. we were dancing to, too, right? I'm like, this is questionable. Who's this playing this? So it's like, so questionable. We should not I be listening can't. to this. Yeah. Oh, my okay, God. A lot of the songs we listen to are questionable. Yeah, like, yeah. like, the way that I used to sing Tupac songs. You don't even know. Oh, my the God. Way I sing Missy Elliott? Girl. Oh my god. That's your freak on? <laughs> I was that person too singing too. I knew like changes like by heart. That's me. And I'm That's like, what me. do I know about that life? What like, do I know little, about that life? Little Indian girl from Brampton. <laughs> like, that is the furthest thing from what my life is. I have a roof over my head. My parents are feeding me good. Oh, like, like I see no changes. Yeah. <laughs> like I have never stolen anything. <laughs> like <laughs> I would say middle school dances were fire. 
You know why? It's because I felt like it was like the one time where all of us could like get together and like That's true. have a dance party. But did you did you guys have like was there like this pressure to get asked to the dance? No, no I don't no. think there was. Okay, for no. us, I feel like there like was. Friends. Yeah, yeah. One time oh God. for this like middle school dance. Okay, so like the guys would ask the girls. I was like pretty nerdy. Like I wasn't like the girl that guys would go after, yeah. right? And so this one guy asked me to the dance because he like one of my friends was like, I'm only going to go with this other guy if, like, you go with this guy. Oh, and I was, okay. It was, like, one of those situations. So it wasn't, like, really, like, he wanted to go to the dance with me. Anyways, like, back then, they would, like, get little gifts, like, back when men, like, were, men like, were nice. rom- romantic. <laughs> yeah. Men were men? Way yeah. back in the day. Yeah. Uh, back in, like, grade seven, <laughs> when they had standards. No. So I would be like, so... But I remember one of the guys, he, like, gifted me this, like, white purse. It was, like, I don't even know where the purse was from. Ooh, okay. Whoa. It was, like, a, and it just, it was filled, it was filled with change. It was what? Change? <laughs> my, like, it wasn't, like, bills. It was just, like, change. And it was just, like, dollars. Come here, mommy. Let me sh- <laughs> Let me shower you with some. So... But I love I, that like unlocked a memory for me because like I haven't thought about that in so that long. Is so funny. And it was just like I just got this like white purse filled with change. It was so random. Damn. A for effort, my yeah. friend. Yeah. A for. Effort. I appreciated it. At that age. At that age. Yeah. Seven. You're giving also, your girl you a bag. Like, that's what I'm saying. He literally gave her a bag. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> I like went home. Went home and put it in my piggy bank. Like, <laughs> love that. That's so love cute. that. Okay, Fazul or Fire Ladu. Fire. Fire. Fazool. Fazool. Huh? I like Ladu. I like that. I love it's Ladu. so good. I'm over if you had asked me gulab jamun, I would have said 100% fire. Really? But Burfi. I like Burfi. I think Burfi's okay. I don't like okay. Ladu. I, like, I don't know. I'm not listen, I'm like a... when somebody gives me like a gift of like matai and they give me all Ladu, I'm just like the, zero it, effort you can't yeah. you can't do a whole box of you it though so that's it. too much that's too like much. i'll have like one if you but, gave like, me give me one. a whole box like i'm like what am i gonna do with all mix of it up this? We want yeah the assortment. yeah we want the assortment everyone i agree with that not just the ladus okay <laughs> just not that. i like the it's one with the, it's like white with the chocolate on top i don't know what that one's called it's not i don't it's know it's barfy right it's I, like brown and white yeah that one i know yeah yeah it's a chocolate i don't know i'm just saying it tastes really good yeah that one's like one of my favorite lob jamun are the best Freaking Agreed. Indian dessert in the world. You know my favorite is the gulab jamun with a little koya in the middle. It's called Dilbahar. Yo, I've never wait, even what is the that? name. So it's like a gulab jamun in an oval shape, and yeah. in the middle oh, there's like a like white. Yeah, 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 I know what you're talking the about. Yeah. I it's that. called yeah. a Dilbahar, people. Hina knows. You know that I know that I knows. I know this because it's my older sister's favorite mm. sweet. Okay, so good. So and I love that. But you know, I also love uh ladu that are like filled with nuts. Okay. Honestly, what? So filled with nuts. Yeah. I never had I that. I've ever had so you that. can get plain ladu, but then you can get ones that are filled with like all of Girl, cashews and all Where the, the hell are you going? Pistachio. Yeah, what's where? your Mitai place? Yeah, what's, what's your, your Mitai, Mitai, Mitai dealer? Yo, <laughs> yo, I love that place. This is amazing. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out because honestly, sponsor us. Yeah, <laughs> why? Their gulab jamun yeah. are insane. They're uh, anything in their Mitai wow. collection. Wow, the fact that you, the fact that you knew this. Sister. This could so. be your ad spot, right? Right. right. <laughs> no, yeah. right? Yeah. Mitai box. Okay, you're right. you're up. Have you got? Well, I don't know if anybody's ever done this, but I'm just gonna say cumon. Have you guys done cumon? No. No. Any sort of tutoring? I would no. say fazul. Just in general, I'd yeah. Say I think fazul like too. And I, I, I don't know. I was also like again super nerd. So yeah. like I was like one that went like went to my teacher for extra help look and like you. I was such a nerd. It was so. I, I look back and I was like, what was I doing? Wow, I'm proud. Of you. Oh yeah, I know. I'm pretty proud of myself yeah. too. But I don't like. I don't think I could have asked my parents for that extra tutor. Mm. Yeah, they would have been like, "Why study harder?" <laughs> <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> I think for me, the reason I'm not like pro Kumon is just like, and I, for the people that do it, that's amazing. I think you should definitely put your kids in tutoring if they need it for sure. But sometimes I feel like, yo, isn't it a lot of pressure on these little kids? It is. it is, and like it's a lot. It, like from a teacher's perspective, <clears throat> is a lot of the stuff is just standardized. Yeah, mm. and it's not really gonna give them any skills. They're just gonna learn how to complete a worksheet. Also, okay. like, aren't they exhausted? Like, yeah, that's what I'm I saying. Feel like yeah, you, you just a did a whole bunch of school and then you're expected to go home and do home. Like, at what point are you 
gonna be able to be a kid exactly. yeah and you know? also i think feeds into that whole idea of like you have to have like that nine to five career yeah and for me i'm just like i want them to pursue like a passion yeah and be like actually like genuinely into something that's beautiful 100%. That's, who knows what's gonna happen one day my <laughs> child's gonna be like hey mom i want to be like a clown at the circus oh. and i'm just gonna sit there and be like go for it sister you do that i can that's so funny yeah one more. all right i have one more Fazool or fire, Instagram or TikTok filters? Fazool. I'm not going to lie. I kind of find them to be fire. Oh, I find it Fazool. Wait, oh, wait, 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 what, what kind of filters like, are we talking? No, we're talking like not the funny filters, not the Snapchat doggy ears. Okay. But like so sometimes, do you know, like sometimes you have like a nice filter <laughs> happening, like a skin I filter. I like eye makeup filter. I think the only filter I ever use is the yeah. Paris filter on Instagram. Like mm. when you mm. like, because I'm like, okay, it, it kind of smooths things it. out and it like <laughs> gives it a much. nice color. Yeah. Other than that, I find filters look really weird on my face. I they look weird on me too. too. Yeah. yeah. I don't like, like using them. I don't know if it's just, it, I don't know if it's made for our ethnic it might not be Features you know what i realized i feel like i used to be like heavy on the filters mm -hmm. back in the day mm -hmm. and i feel like looking back at those things i'm just like okay this like does not suit my skin right yeah. however the paris filter yeah, is that my one's my best favorite yeah. yeah that one's my I favorite still use it till this day because like i feel like with that filter i don't need to go further into like editing the colors yeah. and everything mm -hmm. like that like it just kind of like does everything in one shot yeah. um but yeah, it, it depends. It really depends. Like for a lot of my like entertainment content, I'll put that on. Yeah. For like stuff where I'm like really trying to show my makeup or like yeah. foundation yeah, or yeah, how yeah. things work. Like I don't put anything on because yeah. like I want them to see. To see. Yeah, totally. You know, sense. but yeah. I don't know. I don't know the other filters. I'm going to have to say Fazool because like I it, it just doesn't look right on me. Yeah. No, and that makes you total know? sense. Instagram and TikTok <laughs> needs to make culturally responsive filters. Like yeah. So. Damn, girl. That's why y'all need to <laughs> tell them. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I still like filters, yeah. but like not the overly like super soft skin where you look like a clown filters but yeah a girl still likes filters not gonna lie. i hate when it like shrinks my nose into like nothingness yeah, yeah. And, and then like my your lips jawline, are like yeah like, like, your jawline is, is chiseled my lips <laughs> taking up half my face that's yeah. so true they do that a lot. And, eh? Yeah. I'm like, I look like a Bratz doll. It's just <laughs> yeah. really weird. That's, that's ultimately their goal. Yeah, I think that was the thing. Weird. Because remember when those like filler lips were so in style? Yeah. And then all the filters were all about that? That's yeah. true. I feel like people need to tone it down a little bit. Mm. But a girl still likes her Paris mm. filter. Gotta say. All right. I got Gotta one say. ring. Okay, go for it. You're doing Markers the last one. Markers or whiteout that you used as nail polish? Markers or whiteout? Wait, like which one did I use? Yeah, did you use markers or whiteout as nail polish? And was it Fazool or Fire? I've used whiteout for sure. Is it Fazool or Fire? It's Fazool because <laughs> God knows what what diseases I got from doing. The I don't know if I've ever done that. What? Yeah, maybe markers, but like I was more of like a pen drawing, like men. Oh my God, my I did that too. Like, I did that too. Yeah, it wasn't. That it was wasn't amazing. necessarily that's color fire. That's my fire. nails. That's fire. Yeah, and I loved doing that, like the Mendy designs with the pen. Yeah, that was like that was my jam. That's I don't fire. know if I ever did like a marker nail polish, but like, I, are you guys allowed to wear nail polish or? Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. Would, yeah. You're, you're yeah, like yeah. fine with it, right? Um, because I knew some girls that like they're they not. They don't. They're yeah, not they allowed to. Don't. Yeah. 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 Um, but I used to like wear. I don't know if you guys remember like that shatter. Nail oh my god polish. i remember the opi that. one yeah okay it was like you would put on like the nail polish and then okay. you would put this like shatter like coat like on coat, top yeah and it would like break, break the off nail it. it was so cool and it looked like <laughs> shattered nail it, i don't even yeah. know how to it's like, actually describe so cool. it it's it was so, so cool it was it, like i look back and i'm like that was i don't know if it was cool or not i don't even yeah, know i thought i don't it know so cool. it was i mean cool i tried then. it I it was cool then cool. anyways that was my nails most of the time i love that back then we used um, to put on whiteout on our nails and then take do gel pens and, and then draw on it yeah draw like okay, that's cool. i feel like i missed out on this because that actually that. sounds like something up my alley you we would oh, like we would have so much yeah. fun doing it and then we'd come home and my mom would be pissed she's yeah because it's like, freaking white out yeah she's like why are you putting this on your you, you know what it is it's because we had the liquid white out that had yeah the yeah, yeah. yeah. It sounds like nail polish <laughs> That's what it was. Okay, honestly. Like, if you're gonna make it look like nail polish. No, like, like watch, Gen Z watching this is gonna be like, y'all need a life. <laughs> and they're gonna be like, that's disgusting. <laughs> yeah, for real. We get our nails done at the salon shellac. every week. <laughs> that's expensive. Yeah, it's really yeah, expensive. Okay, well, that generation just. <sighs> you guys got it. You're so missing easy. out. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that was our Fazool or Fire segment. 
welcome to the show welcome to the show welcome <laughs> how did you like the segment i love it that's my favorite segment you are really good at it yeah you're really good really good thanks i okay. try <laughs> <laughs> okay so we always start off the episode by of course telling you guys to subscribe to our channel hello of course everybody knows the drill subscribe like we have our instagram handles we're also including hamali's instagram handles mm-hmm. below make sure you guys follow her she has some amazing content which aru just told you about and we're gonna delve into our episode mm-hmm. today take it over sister all right so the way we have our um episode structured is that i feel like everybody watching listening and the two of us would love to know your origin story oh my gosh so where did you my villain or no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> So where, where did the passion come from? When did you realize like all or nothing, you're going to be going in? Where did it start from? Where are you now? And where do you see yourself moving forward? I feel like it's a really, it's really crazy how it all developed because as um, a child, I would say, so I think I started wearing makeup when I was like in grade seven, grade eight. Oh, yeah. I was, I was like baby. You were in it. Yeah. Yeah. And it wasn't necessarily like I need to look pretty. It was more like. I saw my sister wearing like blue eyeshadow and I was like, that's so cool. Like blue yeah. on your face. Like that's so, and I was that's already cool. into like art and stuff like that. And so it felt like painting on my mm-hmm. face. And so, um, throughout high school, I got really into makeup. I would sit in my bathroom for hours, do makeup and like do little photo shoots and stuff <laughs> like that. And, and it was never like, again, it wasn't always like pretty makeup. It was like very like editorial or I'd be drawing yeah. stuff. Like I remember going to high school with like, eyelids drawn on my eyes or like cheetah wow. print like eyeshadow so okay, it was, that is so cool yeah so it was never like just like like a it was it was it was really an art for me it was really like something to help me express myself yeah. and then um at one point I my ex-boyfriend he decided to encourage me to become a makeup artist because his sister was one yeah okay. and so I ended up going to like makeup school while I was in university and um I ended up working under his sister for a while so like while I was in university I was freelancing at the same time um under her and when I graduated I was like oh my god this is like a hundred percent what I want to do like I absolutely love love it I'm like I can't believe I get to make money off of doing makeup yeah um so I told my parents and they were like absolutely not (laughs) and so I was like okay so I ended up getting like a nine to five okay and share your first job like first job ever yeah Yeah. um i worked at uh bcbg i don't know if you guys remember that i remember i nice job yo lie nice first part-time job nice story i lied on my resume like i like three fake jobs and then i like because no one was hiring me i was like 17 i was like who, or no, I was 16, I think. Yeah. And I was like, who's going to hire? I have no experience. Yeah. So, I, like, I put three fake... I said I, like, worked at Abercrombie. <laughs> oh. I worked at, like... I worked at, like, Winners, Abercrombie, and, like, one of my, my aunt's, like, stores or something yeah. like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, Which was a lie. Yeah. Um. Anyways, I got that job. Yeah. Which was great. And then I've had, like, so many jobs after that. Like, yeah. I've worked corporate jobs. I've worked a lot of retail. Um... And then my first job out of university was at this like waste management company. Okay. And I was like business to business sales. Mm -hmm. And so um, I hated my life because it was, first of all, like lots of garbage, like just so much garbage. Like I remember for training, like I had to go on garbage routes. I had to like ride on garbage trucks Mm -hmm. and like I had like eight, like 16 wheeler, like garbage trucks, like dump garbage in front of me. I had to like sift through it. Like I had to like do like, like just dirty stuff like yeah. that um which is so opposite of who i am as a yeah, person right. which i was like okay i can't believe i worked this like weird garbage yeah. job yeah exactly and now like so random i do social media and i'm like yeah. this like pretty girl online that yeah. does her makeup and like i started off like <laughs> sifting <laughs> through garbage so yeah. um that's a job i got right out of university mm-hmm. And I was hating my life. I was so miserable. Yeah. Um, so I lasted like three months. And then I like told my dad, I'm like, I want to I wanna quit. I want to do makeup full time. And my dad was like, okay, why don't you just like go part time instead, okay, right? Yeah. And so I went and I talked to my manager and I was like, I'm thinking like maybe I can do part time. And then yeah. so I can take on more makeup clients and stuff like that. And he looked at me and he's like, he's like just he's like if you're gonna do something do it 100 percent. like there's no he's like there's no point of you doing it half like you know like 
just put all of he's like if that's what you want to do put all of yourself into it and he's like and if it doesn't work out you have a job waiting for you like don't Mm -hmm. stress about it right and I was like okay and then I went home and I told my dad that and my dad's like okay and like and then like a week later I quit right and my dad I think that like really threw him off because I yeah you know when I I I don't know if your parents are like this but my parents are very a lot of talk Mm -hmm. well they'll be like oh I want to do this I want to do that but they'll never actually like follow through with it and for me I'm very much like okay I want to do this let's do it like tomorrow like if there's no like research there's no like thing behind it I'm just like let's just go that's an amazing quality it's good and it's bad because there's a lot of like there's no plan. Yeah, I heard totally, You know, totally. um, but yeah, so I ended up going into it full time and it was like a very, that moment after where I finished my last day, it was, it was a very like, shit, now what? Oh, like, you know, because. Daunting. Yeah, yeah, it was daunting because I knew my parents weren't supportive of the decision. Yeah. And I was like, I have to make, like, there was that pressure of like, I have to make it. Yeah. There's no option be like yeah, there's nothing you can't fail. All about. yeah exactly oh because i'm like okay i talked all this shit about like how i'm gonna do yeah, this yeah, and then, like yeah. now i gotta live up to it Absolutely. right and so um that's when i started making my my sister my um now husband encouraged me to start like putting tutorials online because they're like oh like you know just just do it other yeah. people do it I was like, okay, maybe that'll help like gain some clientele Mm -hmm. for me because like people will book me based on my personality a little bit more and like, you know, they'll they'll get to know me, they'll like me, they'll see that I can do makeup. Mm -hmm. And then so I started that like maybe like August, July, August of 2016. And then I would say like March ish of 2017 is one one of my videos blew up yeah and it was like kind of a light bulb moment where I was like wow there's there's not a lot of brown girls in this space Mm -hmm. um so I just like wanted to capitalize on it because I'm like we need representation absolutely right like there's so many tutorials like the reason and my the tutorial that went viral for me was like my thicka tutorial like how to put a thicka in your hair because like god nobody knows how to do that shit. yeah like that took me so long to figure out so it went viral like it wasn't just on my page that it went viral like it went viral like on other people's page like it got reposted so many times Mm. um so I'm like okay clearly there's a market for it absolutely yeah and so I did like everything I could to push out my content in 2017 Mm. it was just back to back I grew my page I think from in 2017 I think I grew my page from like four four or five thousand to like eighty eighty five thousand something like that in like that year which was wild so exciting um um, but it came with it was just a lot yeah a lot especially when you don't know anyone in the Mm. industry you don't like you're one of the first of your kind to be doing it absolutely right so there it was very daunting because i'm Mm. like okay who do i turn to like who do i talk to about stuff like i didn't know anyone that was like going through the same thing I didn't know how to monetize off of it too like I kind of knew but it was a lot of like figuring out trial and error learning curve exactly and so um in 2018 I decided to take that leap and just like go into it full time because I was having a lot of health problems at that time too Mm. um and I just couldn't keep waking up at like 3 a.m to go do makeup on a bride like it was just like that sleep schedule was really messing with me that's really rough it was a lot and and I think 2017 too I also had um a really bad car accident I like totaled my car so like my body was all messed up and like all this stuff so I was like okay 2018 I'm just gonna another leap of faith I'm just gonna like go into it full time and it just kind of took off like it it, and I got to I got all these cool opportunities I feel like I broke a lot of barriers which is really nice um and like after that like I saw so many brown girls like entering the industry and it was it just made me so happy because a lot of them also came to me like how do you do this how do you do that and I was just so happy I was able to provide them with like answers exactly because like when I again like I think for me a lot of my career has been there's no one else doing it and someone should be doing it yeah, and totally. if not me then who then, yeah. right and so it was nice it was nice to be able to like mentor girls and um and just like see what the community has grown into now yeah. because now I see like my brown girls all over social media it's and so like, nice yeah. to see it I love that like we're I winning love that. we're here exactly. like we made it we're taking you know? up space 100% yeah. we deserve that we to deserve. yeah Absolutely. 100% yeah. okay so going back to when I was like having these health problems yeah. and stuff, there was a lot of, I guess, healing that happened in that time because there was just so many 
mental and physical health problems that I was going through. Mm -hmm. So when I was like 24, 25, I started, I started Reiki. Um, and I think that really took me in a different direction in life Mm -hmm. that I, I wasn't expecting to go in. Um, and it helped heal a lot of like my inner trauma that I was dealing with and also a lot of my physical health yeah. problems. So for a lot of people who are watching who don't know, do you want to explain what Reiki is? Yeah, so Reiki is like energy healing and it did seem like foo-foo to me like when yeah. I first started. Um, yeah. But I was so desperate at that point. Like yeah. at this point in my life, I was going through so much. Like yeah. I... I I'll just like list some of the things that were happening to me. So like I have my period all the time, like Mm -hmm. all the time. Yeah. Like if I wasn't on birth control, there was a point where I stopped birth control Yeah. and I was bleeding for four months straight. And I was like, okay, this is like, I I was, it was either that, it was either like I'm on birth control and birth control was making me batshit crazy. Like I had birth control, the most insane mood. So like I could not even recognize myself. I felt like I would like, turn into the hulk like it was so crazy yeah. the yeah. swings it was giving me so it was like the option of like be bash it crazy or bleed all the time yeah. like yeah. pick your poison yeah. and so it was very like it was draining me completely like mm. i just didn't know what was going on um and then there was just like a whole bunch of other health problems that were happening like my i, I kept like losing sight in my left eye like oh it was just like was in and out sometimes which was so random um i was i i wasn't sleeping properly like i probably for like three years got like two to three hours of sleep a night like at most um and i think that was making me very like delusional like i I was like hallucinating like i definitely was like hearing voices in my head and like things like that so it felt it was like a very overwhelming experience to live that for like three years Mm -hmm. i was having anxiety attacks like an insane amount like I, I would have at least like one a day wow. oh and gosh. sometimes upwards of like five to seven in a day and it was so mentally draining and all this is happening simultaneously as my page is blowing up mm. oh so my it's gosh. like you're like this one person online where you're like so happy and then yeah. like behind the scenes like your life is like crumbling like no one would ever like look at your page and think it. yeah exactly, exactly. Yeah. and so it was it felt so I felt so disconnected yeah. from myself right. and then on top of that like it was I had like a really bad relationship with my friends like they just like yeah. weren't very good friends to toxic me friendships yeah toxic friendships and then uh I obviously didn't have a good relationship with my parents yeah and like living at home it was just really stressful like you know and then I had just started this business and like put, like put all yeah. of my stuff into so there was just and then I got into that car accident oh my god so like I was like my car was total and like because I couldn't stop working like I I really messed up my back because of that because yeah. like I got into that car accident at like 5 p.m got home from the collision center at 11 p.m up at 2 a.m to go do a oh ride my so god. like it was just non-stop there was just so many health problems happening and I would go in and out of doctors all the time mm-hmm. and they would just be like you're fine you're fine everything's coming back fine. i'm like this is not fine yeah yeah i am not exactly. fine yeah. like there, i feel like everything is like like nothing is functioning yeah, like what exactly. do you mean what do you mean having your period for four months is that fine. is not fine. That normal exactly. that is so not yeah. fine and so i was at a point where i was just so desperate yeah. for like anything i was like i'll just try whatever right. at this yeah. point so i started one of my friends suggested reiki she's very spiritual and um i was like yeah whatever like i'll do it and I started Reiki and it was very much um, like it's like an energy cleansing type of work. Yeah. Um, so you like lie on like a almost like a massage type mm-hmm. bed and then they put your hands over you and they like start removing blockages from your chakras and things like that. Yeah. Wow. Um, it's definitely I think it's one of those things where it's like you have to put your faith in it. Mm, if yeah. you don't, it's not really going to work for yeah, you. Right. Um, and I think at this point I was like do anything like yeah. just like I'll put my faith in whatever yeah, figure this out and but it was crazy it was crazy to see how much my life had changed yeah. in that like year that I started doing Reiki because like my period regulated um wow we were taught like I had introduced my my boyfriend to like my parents um I decided to move out that year wow. I like we were getting engaged like there was just like everything I, I dropped my friends of 10 years like wow. just a back to back to back mm-hmm. everything just started changing yeah and it was insane and then 
um after that so i that's kind of like what really triggered my like healing journey yeah Mm -hmm. and then in 2020 is when i decided when covid hit obviously everything was like a shit show um (laughs) and i i desperately needed help like it was just it was really bad Uh, and 2019 is also when i was diagnosed with pmdd yeah which for those of you who don't know what that is it's um it's kind of like pms on steroids it's like just like pms really really heightened heightened yeah Yeah, like there's a lot of you know like a lot of anxiety a lot of depression um i I get like these like sleep attacks that's what i like to call them where i just like i i need to sleep like in a moment like it's just it hits you so hard um a lot of suicidal thoughts like a lot of like things like that so It got worse in 2020 when the world shut down Mm -hmm. and that's when I decided to start therapy and I think therapy just really changed my view of the world and also COVID really changed because you had things like BLM happening. So it just like really opened my eyes to things that I was like not expecting Mm -hmm. to open my eyes to and that's what really changed my page as well into what it is today where I talk a a lot about just stigmatized taboo topics because I feel like again someone needs to talk about it if not me then who you know and I think you know someone when someone starts the conversation it keeps going like Mm -hmm. other people start to get more courage to start talking about these things more openly as well Mm -hmm. right and even if they don't get to have the courage to talk about it openly like at least they know there's someone else out there that's experiencing that's so, something yes, similar. That's so true. Because that was something I really struggled with growing up. I felt so alone in my thoughts yeah. that I was like, I must be the only. I'm like, why does no one understand me? Yeah. Like, why does this yeah. feel so? I'm like, am I crazy? Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. and there's this constant underlying feeling of feeling crazy or selfish or like guilty or sh- like shameful. Yeah. Yeah. And so it was, it, I was like, you know, I wish I heard someone saying these yeah. things growing up that like, yeah. Oh, you know, my parents were like this, or this was like very like difficult for me to deal with. Yeah. And I just didn't see it, especially in the Brown community. Oh my God. That's so true. I but I also think that. it's like something that our parents have kind of always said with us, like don't share oh, things about your yeah, personal yeah. life. They never so like everyone it. collectively was like, yeah. Don't share shit. Don't like anything. Keep, keep it in the family. Cl- keep it in the family. Yeah. So true. And so that's why you look at other people and you're like, well, no one's going through this except me. Yeah, hundred percent. And so like when you started sharing it, it was probably like everybody's like, oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. You I got know. you got a bo- you got a bit of both of it though, right? Yeah. You got like the people that were like, oh my god, like this is exactly my experience. I didn't know anyone else felt this way. Yeah. And then you got all the other people that are like, you're an ungrateful bee. Oh, like oh you do this. You're like a bad There's person. Always gonna and be you're people like, like that. Okay, tangent. What's one of the worst comments that you've gotten? Yo, that's a deep question. Oh. Also, how do you handle some of yeah. the negativity that comes your way? Because honestly, I've seen your page. You guys, this girl handles it. Because like some people are so out of line. Yeah. So out of line. People are crazy. I think I think I'm okay with like the rejection, the the people not liking me. I think mm-hmm. part of it is like one i feel i strongly feel if you have the time to write comments like that you must be a loser oh, like you have right? to be 100 there's no way you're not yeah, a loser yeah, yeah. like also, i just i hate how everybody feels like the minute they have a screen in their hand the power that they own yeah like, you don't know but like no, the worst comments that. are the one that's like i don't find this relatable at all why okay, did you take the scroll. three seconds? Yeah. Why did you take the three seconds to write it down? Okay, like, when they tell me they're leaving. Like, right. unfollow. <laughs> like, okay, then unfollow. Like, like I don't what do you want me to know? I'm paying like, you to be here. Like, real. I'm so confused. Like, it's like I'm playing the world's smallest violin for your departure. Seriously. Like, I swear to God. It's uh, yeah. I genuinely feel like that's weird. Like, it's yeah. a, a, I've never. I have come across so much content that I do not like. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I have never in my life thought let me just pause for right? a second. let me comment on this person's <laughs> thing and like i'm following you now i would be embarrassed never... for my own behavior Same. right yeah. like a root fix, fix up fix up why are you doing that yeah i cannot, 100%. I cannot. it is weird I, I, it's just it's a weird behavior i i think it's especially weird i think there's a difference between commenting like like constructive criticism absolutely right absolutely which can be hurtful but yeah. like it's constructive criticism it's constructive there's criticism, like yeah. there is a purpose behind yeah. it and then it's another thing that's like your parents must hate you right I'm like oh okay like, you're so ugly yeah yeah like all what? right Thanks. 
but out yeah. of left field sure i guess yeah. you know i'm like you have no idea i i think the comments that bother me the most yeah i was kind of talking to you about this before i was like yeah. comments about not so much my looks i'm like you can i don't give a shit if you think yeah, i'm pretty totally. or not like yeah. i'm not here to be pretty for you yeah. i feel like the comments that kind of get to me are the the character comments like yeah. the ones that are really um like character attacking my yeah. character mm-hmm. or attacking my family or attacking my relationship with my family because i yeah. do get a lot of like oh your parents must hate you you're so ungrateful like your mom must be so proud your dad must be so proud like in a sarcastic yeah, way yeah, right. yeah. and um those ones like they i I feel like I've gotten used to them, but they're just annoying because I'm like, you know nothing about you my relationship. Yeah. You know what I'm telling you. Absolutely. And that's it. And I was like, you, and then also the ones that are like, so why are you bringing this online? Like, why don't you just talk right. to your parents? Oh, keep it private. Wait, do you not think I've t- done that? Yeah. Like, but like so can we also yeah, just like, normalize saying that like, you can still have parents that you love that were still toxic into toxic mm, things. Can we normalize yes. that? Also like, can we also understand that people go through different phases in their right? life? Right? Yeah. And I bet these people that are saying it have gone through so much toxic shit, but, like, they've turned a blind eye to oh, it. Oh, right. So like, or in denial. In denial. In denial. And for me, I feel like when I watch your videos, and I was telling you this as well, like, the videos that I think I related to the most were the ones where you talked about this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, because you... It's you so have, relatable. Yeah, and you've, like created and cultivated a community where a lot of people that do watch your content are looking at it like damn we did go through that yeah i am Yo, going it was that. hard it was hard and right? sometimes you we we had a blind eye to yeah to some of our things because yeah like, well this is normal this is yeah. the way it should be it's so you know what's so funny i had a conversation with my friend and she was like well at least growing up we weren't abused i'm like but we kind of uh, were but- like mental yeah <laughs> the mental abuse also, oh, why about is that, that the standard? Yeah. Why is that the standard? 100%. Why does it have to be an extreme right? end for there to be out? Yeah, I agree with that. And I think, like, it's, it impacts people in, like, the, the most weirdest ways. Mm-hmm. So, like, all these things that you were saying about, like, all these health issues that you experienced. and then It was, was all this, from that. That's what I'm saying, It's from the right? stress. It was and from the anxiety. At this, like, turning point in your life where you're like, I'm freaking picking myself. Mm-hmm. I'm doing what I want. And you see the shift. Mm-hmm. I right? think my issue was, like, I always picked myself. Like, yeah. I always did what I wanted to do but it was this journey of being so lonely in it like it was yeah. such it was such like there was such deep rooted guilt and shame and fear and rejection mm-hmm. and just like wanting so desperately to be loved by the people oh that you gosh. wanted yeah. you wanted love from yeah, you know exactly. what i mean like the desperate need for validation from my yeah. parents and it never getting it and like feeling like god what am i doing wrong Absolutely. like what am i doing wrong like Absolutely. i'm not out here like getting arrested or like right? drunk yeah. in a ditch or like you know i'm like i just want to be a makeup artist yeah exactly like i'm not doing anything insane like it That's could be much worse yeah. and um and you know there was just like the constant rejection and the constant like and then you also know like other people are talking about you right and so you you know there's already people talking about you and then the people that are supposed to love and protect you and be by your side aren't there yeah and so you're going through all of it alone and nobody kind of gets nobody gets it and i think as a human you want nothing more than to belong like you want to be like loved and you You want to be be loved yeah you want to be a part of something and when you feel like you have to make these decisions that go against like your pack like your you know your people like it's It's a tough decision and it's not a decision that's taken lightly um and in the short run I think in the long run it's very beneficial to choose yourself because I don't look back at my life with any regrets yeah, and I think my relationships beautiful. have evolved enough to um, accept my decisions and like, you know, be, and the people around me are now happy for I love that. where, where I'm at yeah. in my life. Mm-hmm. But back then when they didn't understand it, yeah. um, it was just a very, very lonely journey. And there's not too many people that go on that journey, especially at a young age. Mm-hmm. I think like, I think, you know, I have friends in like my forties that are discovering that now and yeah. choosing them, choosing, choosing themselves now. But I was doing this at like 23, 24. And yeah. that's a really hard thing to do when everyone is doing the same thing at yeah. that age. Yeah. And you're the only one that's not exactly. Yeah. So I think like when you've gone through situations like that, um, those types of character hate comments come at you. Like they, they kind of hurt you a little bit right. more because you're just like, 
you don't get it. Like, yeah. you don't get it. Get you it. don't get it. Yeah. Like, you haven't even lived a second in my exactly. shoes. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. you don't know what it's like when you can't even leave your house without your parents giving you like I couldn't Girl. even go to my car like yeah. get something from my car outside and come back into the house with my, my parents being like where are you going mm. what are you doing yeah. like I'm just going to my damn car like, right? I'm like, I'm like if I'm leaving I'll tell you honestly I, I know you. what you mean I know what you, you mean you know, you know. Yeah. and so it's like it's like you had to live this double life you yes. had to in order to survive and in order to thrive and in order to be happy but like it's like you're happy in one way and so miserable in the yeah. other, you know? And so it's like you never fully get to be happy. And it wasn't until, like, I worked through a lot of that in therapy that I've gotten to a point where I feel good about myself. Yeah, right. Because, yes, I did all the things that I wanted to, but as I'm doing them, I feel so bad about it. Like, yeah. the whole time, Because it's know? always going to be in the back of your mind that, like, because you've been raised a certain way. Exactly. So it's almost this, like... I, f- I feel bad for saying it, but it's like you've been brainwashed to believe things about yourself. 100%. And then like reframing your mind when you're older is so hard. It's so yeah, hard. Because you're just so like, oh, hard. wait, no, no. Like, I know I want to pick myself, but am I allowed to pick myself? Yeah. Like, um, but but they won't like me. And yeah. like, that that makes it's, me feel it's sad. The yeah. const- it's like the being raised on guilt, fear and shame. Oh, my God. Like those were like 100 percent. The three like pillars of like, <laughs> like parenting. The, this each, this yeah. childhood. <laughs> like it was so it was so insane because like, you know, and, and I remember getting this comment about, um, you know, don't you ever think about your parents? Like, oh, don't you Lord. ever like understand how they feel? I'm like, I'm always thinking about my parents. Yeah. I'm constantly and and there is so much guilt and shame that comes with going against them like that you're constantly thinking about that brings up all this anxiety that brings up all this depression that like like that's why I have mental health problems you know what I mean because there is that constant in the back of your head oh my god I'm a shameful kid like I'm such a disappointment I like Mm -hmm. you know and so there's this there's this part of you that feels like you should never be celebrated like you should never like you you don't deserve love like you don't deserve happiness you don't deserve any of the things so like even when I'm hitting like big accomplishments I'm so numb to them because I'm like oh you you just don't like you're like okay that's what I'm supposed to do yeah like that's what I'm supposed to do also like like, that whole concept of like you want your parents to cheer you on but like there's there's so many thisy parents that don't do that yeah no that don't show up you know what I mean how do you celebrate yourself how do you but that's the that's the thing how do you celebrate yourself when you don't even know how to love yourself exactly because like which thisy girls like like really realistically speaking how many of us we're taught to love ourselves mm-hmm. it was None. it was you are lovable if your parents if you follow what your parents yeah, say. yeah. or if you that's follow what, what society expects exactly you. Yeah. that's exactly. the only way you're gonna be lovable yeah. and, and like what society it's the mm-hmm. this society because mm-hmm. like if you follow the canadian side it's a different standard no 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 right? it's gotta be the this society or like yeah. whichever little like group you're from yeah. right so like you have to follow those rules and like you do d- live a dual life and yeah. living the dual oh life God. like sometimes when you're young you don't realize that it's a dual life you grow older. It is a scary like, life to heck? live because yeah. I got so good at lying. It was yeah. insane. And like, I don't just lie to like random people. It was really just to my parents. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I talked about that online one yeah. time and people were like, oh my God, that's awful. Like, why would you do that? I'm like, I don't think you understand. If I didn't lie, I would not have had a life. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. I would not Absolutely. have been able to do anything or experience yeah. anything or date or like, yeah. mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like there's just, there, there would have been no life. Yeah. And it sucks because I want to tell my parents stuff. Right. Well, I, I want to. It's not like I don't, but I feel like I can't. Yeah. Right. Because if I do, and what pissed me off would be like, they'd be like as I got older, they'd be like, "You don't talk to us." I'm like, like, really? Of I don't <laughs> talk to you. <laughs> what are you gonna say? You're just gonna get mad at me. I wonder why. Literally, I'm like yeah. every like anytime I do try to talk to you, like yeah. it's a lecture. I'm like, what? I'm like, what am I gonna talk to you That's about? So true. You That's know, so true. like there's a constant fear of like, I like if I was in trouble, I. I couldn't call my parents. Absolutely. Yeah. Right? Like, if your kids were in trouble right now, you would hope that they'd be comfortable enough to call you yeah. that's to like get you goal. out of it. And yeah. that's, the goal. Goal. that's the goal. Yeah. I could not call my parents. There's, There's no, no way I would. Call like, my I would have to either. figure stuff out yeah. on my mm-hmm. own or die. I don't know. Like, <laughs> whatever, whatever the other <laughs> like, option was. They're like, going to beat my ass. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It was great. 
great being here, but that's no, all I, I have. I like, get that. Yeah. <laughs> like Internally, you're like, it was. Yeah, yeah. Seriously. I like, want to go home, though. No, you go home, you're sitting in regret, and the next night, you're like, let's do it all over. Yeah, I'm not lie. But I'm going to be honest. That whole thing about lying, whoever the hell wrote that comment, they're freaking liars. Themselves. Yeah, for real. For real. Biggest liar. Because let me tell you, if there's one thing they see girls know how to do, it's lies. It's true. <laughs> Yo, you know, I, I realized this. Like, I didn't even realize how good I was at it yeah. or how much it was ingrained into me to yeah. have answers for everything. Like, yeah. I had answers at the tip of my tongue. Like, yeah. anything and everything I had an excuse for. It was like, I was like 50 steps ahead. Yeah. yeah. Because you had to be. My dad was a very, very, like, smart. Like, he was, like, sharp as a knife. Like, he yeah. was very, like, on top of things. Mm. And so you also had to be very on top of things. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd get caught. Yeah. Right? And so I remember when this was like when me and my boy or my husband first started dating, um, he like we were going downtown or something like that. And he had to like go back to get something Mm -hmm. at his house. And um, we went back and we probably went back like maybe an hour or so after we left. Yeah. And I remember drilling him in the car. I was like, so what are you going to say when you walk through the door? What are you going to do? Like, aren't your parents going to be like, why are you back? Like, blah, blah, blah. Like all this stuff. And he's like, I'm he's like, he's like, I, he's like, I don't even think my parents would notice if I walked in the door. And I was oh like, are you God. joking? Like, what type of foreign human are you? Oh my God. Like, as soon if I came back an hour after I left, yeah. my parents would be like, what are you doing? Yeah. Where did you go? Why did this happen? Why what did you leave? Why are you in trouble? Yeah. Let me I'm escort like, you outside. Yeah, exactly. And then I'm like, where, where would you park the car? Like, where, like, oh, and like, wouldn't like, your parents come outside and see if the, the, there's a car there and who's sitting in it and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh. And there's like rapid yeah. fire questions yeah. happening and he's like are you insane like what is wrong with that is like you a know? different wo- it's a different world for girls it is. Yeah. It's, it's a different, a different world, different world. Yeah. like the amount of like planning you oh have it's goodness. exhausting it's like exhausting. it is exhausting. it's so exhausting like i remember there was another time where like um i had been out with a guy it was like maybe like like 12 1 a.m or something like that we were like eating mcdonald's okay and my dad called and he was like he's like where are you he's like this is in a hotel blah 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 blah. like you went out yesterday all this stuff right he's like get home right now he's like you have 10 minutes to get home and i'm like Mm -hmm. oh my god i'm like with this guy so i was like okay whatever i was like i was like he dropped me home and he was driving past my house and I saw my dad standing oh my on the Why am I getting so scared the right porch. now? My heart <laughs> dropped. I was like, so what scared. am I gonna do? Because it's not like he can yeah. drop me down this because my dad would be like, Why why are you walking home? Yeah. 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 Where are you coming from? Yeah. Oh. Where who dropped you? Yeah. Where like you know what I mean? Oh my god. Okay, so I had to I was I ducked like so quick yeah I, I'm, I'm shocked i even saw my dad in the yeah. dark like Yo, i'm not gonna lie because my dad's pretty lie. dark like i'm he, getting so scared right oh, now it, it, it was, i'm in it with you the panic was insane <laughs> so i like i like ducked in my car in, in his car and i was like just keep driving just keep driving oh my God. and then i i called my friend who i had been like we had gone out before yeah and then okay. i met and then i met up with this yeah guy, right and so i called my friend and i was like you have to drop me home. Yeah. Right. And she's like, I can't. I'm like, she's like, I'm at home. Yeah. Like, what am I going to tell? Him? She's like, what am I going to tell my mom? Yeah. yeah like, yeah. how do I, how do I get out of that? Yeah. Right. And I was like, okay. I was like, I'm going to say my car broke down at the end of your street. Yeah. And then you, I'm going to, I'm going to walk to your house and my parents can't pick me up because they're drunk. So your, so your mom is like, okay with you dropping me off. Right. And obviously your mom's like, that's, that's sketch, right? <laughs> yeah. So her mom comes with us. Oh my God. And I was God. like, oh my God. Okay. So it was like me, her mom and like, and, and, um, her in the car. And then she finally drives me home. Like it was probably at least like a half an hour later at this point. Oh, wow. Yeah. And my dad's like pissed. He's like still waiting outside. And I like, he comes to, so where this is like my house yeah. and like we're across, she's like across the street dropping me. Right. And my dad, like, comes to the car, like, oh. opens the door. And I was like, oh, my God, imagine if oh. I was with that guy. Oh. Like, oh I, like yes. all hell would have broke loose. And he's like, you know, where are, like, where have you been? He's like, you're always out, blah, blah, blah. He's like, give me your keys. So he took my keys from me so I wouldn't be able to. Friend. Yeah. And, and her like, mom. Oh, and the next day I sat through, like, probably, like, a three-hour lecture of, like, 
I wasn't even home that late. It was like one in the morning. Like yeah. it wasn't like it wasn't that. I late. Am not I wasn't even, even drunk. Kidding? I was kidding. I was nothing. I am shaking. Oh yeah, my God. God. it was like the like most I'm insane. I was like, like you and said your dad was standing outside. I was like, yeah. where is he? Girl, where is he at? Is the he fact that now? I had to like make that up and be like, okay, well, how am I gonna get home? Like, who's gonna yeah. drop me? How is yeah. like, how am I gonna get her out of her house? Okay, because the quick you, thinking, though, you know, yeah. like also insane. you trying to help, like what really like resonated with me is your friend being like but how am i gonna yeah like, now i need an excuse to exactly get yeah exactly. she's not like this is a collective experience this is a collective. Exactly. like i can't leave her hanging help me figure it out so i can help you out sister Yo, exactly oh, so much. it's like okay now now I'm, uh, am i only like lying to my dad i'm lying to her mom i'm like we yeah. gotta figure this out like yeah. what am i gonna do what are the logistics where is my car gonna be where i'm gonna walk from yeah. like where is this guy gonna drop me like what is happening you know what i mean and so it's like and like in my mind you're telling the story and i'm like wait a second what if your dad <laughs> went to her mom and is like, "Where's the Where's the car? Let's go get the car!" Oh, oh, oh my god, I didn't even think I, that far. I I am tripping right now because oh I'm god, like, for real. what would you say in that? You moment? know, I had, I think I told that story online. Someone's like, "Why aren't you taking an Uber?" I'm like, "Do you know how old I am?" There was no Uber. There was no Uber. The Uber was the, the, I, the and taxi. And if I came home and I would be able to drive in a who can afford the taxi? Exactly. At that age? And if I came home and I taxi, my dad would be like, "I thought you went out with your friend." Yeah. Where's your friend and her car? Okay, but see how our brains are working right now. Like, okay, think about everything. Yeah. What else could? What? What else? You know that tie up You know, the wheels are you know that meme with that lady in the math problem. Yeah. <laughs> That's like that was us. That- I'm like, oh, oh my god, god. right now. <laughs> I'm literally like, okay, is there like any like fails in this plan that she just told us? Oh, oh my god. Goodness. Hopefully wow. my dad doesn't see this. I don't know if he's <laughs> I don't know if he's ever heard that. She, story. she <laughs> was she was hanging out with friends all night oh long. We'll vouch. She was with us. We're vouch we're vouching for her. So sad because like I wasn't even doing it and we were eating McDonald's. Yeah. I'm like I could have at least been doing something bad with this guy. <laughs> like to like get in this much you trouble. Know, worth the- <laughs> What I think is a collective experience is the amount of times that brown girls like actually get in trouble. You're oh, really yeah. not doing anything. I'm not gonna lie, that's true, yeah. right? And that's then true. when you're doing something and you don't get caught, you're like, Damn. for the love of God. And then you're on a high horse and you want to do it again. And guess what? Then you get caught. Then you get caught. <laughs> but then when you get caught, the fear that it puts Whoa. in you, like, like even rethinking about that moment, is like <laughs> trauma. Like she's telling me these stories, and I'm like. Yo, there's been so many times like that where I'm like, I don't know, like where to go, like what to do, like how to like. I'm like, where? I'm like, there's just a quick thinking on your feet. You're like, you have to be so good. I'm like, Daisy girls were really great problem solvers. Sure, first time. Put it on our resume. Put that on your resume. And nobody can like mess with us when it comes to that. Give me a problem. I got you. You were in a job interview. You tell that story. and You're like, I'm a quick thinker. And honestly, if you don't get the job, I'd be pissed off. I would hire you immediately. Like you got the job. You You were well under pressure. Yeah. Work well under under pressure. pressure. Problem solver. Because the truth is, that is is literally a life or death situation. (laughs) No, it is teamwork. And it's a life or death situation. (laughs) It's so true. I mean, like, if your dad ever caught you, oh my I would God. be shook. There's Yo, so many I, times. Like, you you told the story, and I was so in it that I feel like your dad is outside the house. Yeah, right oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yo, the looking. panic. The panic. <laughs> and, like, I'm shocked that I even caught him because, like I said, my dad's, like, dark-skinned. So, like, it was just a shadow. Oh, and yeah. I'm, like, and, like, there's no lights on yeah, or yeah. anything, mm. like, outside the house. He's just, like, kind of, I was, like, oh. <laughs> so I'm, like, the fact that I even caught that i'm like thank god for the 2020 for vision because like oh my goodness what would i have done if i pulled up and he was like who's that guy literally you would have beat that guy down. like oh my he's goodness. from the Gujarati bay community <laughs> <laughs> so first of all thank you for sharing that yeah, yeah you're that was like a major deep dive and oh my god it resonated honestly and that chills. <laughs> the chills the chills <laughs> i know there's so many girls out there that are like we feel you <laughs> we've been there I know, I know you guys. Okay, so I had a couple questions. Yeah. For you, okay, the first question that I had was, now that you've gone through this journey, mm-hmm. right, yes. of like, you know, like actually like putting yourself first, making these decisions. If you look back on your life, in and you had the opportunity to change one thing, what do you think you would change, mm-hmm. or would you just leave it the same? I think maybe going to therapy earlier yeah. um that's probably the only thing i would change like i don't regret any of my decisions mm-hmm. um i think they made me who i am today yeah. and led me down this path like i don't think i would be talking about all this stuff 
if I hadn't gone through all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, But I wish I had gone to therapy earlier. So I would have been kinder to myself earlier. Um, Like you said, like we're not taught how to. First, I think we're not taught how to love in general, yeah. let alone like love ourselves. Yeah. Right. And so I think there was so much time of my life that I wasted hating myself oh, and yeah. like, you know, just self loathing and self deprecating. And the conversations in my head were very, very negative for a yeah. long time. Um, and that also, that I think a big part played a big part in how I interacted with people because like it's how I interacted with my like I I, all that resentment all that anger a lot of it started with not having empathy for myself right Right. and not you know being kind to myself and if I can't even do that for myself how am I supposed to do it for other people exactly and so that ended up showing up a lot in my relationships Mm -hmm. right Uh, um, especially like with my parents I Mm -hmm. felt like that relationship I approached with so much anger and resentment Um, Even with my old friends, they were toxic, but I reciprocated that energy back, right? Because it's the environment I was in. And um, again, just like not being able to understand how to communicate better. Mm -hmm. Um, So had I gone to therapy, I think I would have had a better understanding of how to approach situations, how to love myself, Mm -hmm. how to have empathy for the people around me. Um. Yeah, that's the only thing I would I would kind of change. But everything else, like, I don't regret anything. I, love I actually yeah. love that because I think there's so many of us that have all these regrets and this baggage that we hold on to. Right. And, like, to your point about therapy, I feel like it's so important for people to actually get therapy yeah like sometimes you don't think you need it and then you're everyone in therapy. Needs therapy everyone, yeah, everyone needs, needs therapy, therapy okay you you don't you think you don't need it and then like when you start you like the, Everything the, that the things that you unpack and the 100%. things you learn about yourself mm-hmm. it really does help you like change your mindset into a growth mindset 100%. It really does. And, and i have to say like that's one thing in the desi community that it's definitely seen as a taboo topic yeah, yeah. saying or acknowledging or wanting to even ta- say the word therapy in a home yeah. like i feel like especially for younger girls mm-hmm. yeah if you're living in a home where you feel like the environment is toxic or you're going through anxiety and depression yeah and you're like how do i even tell my parents that I may have some mental health issues. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I need to approach How, I their... Think you, you don't even recognize it sometimes, right? Because right? like, when I look back at my life, like the amount of times I, I would get called like lazy or like whatever, yeah. useless, whatever. Right. Because I was like constantly sleeping, constantly like yeah. out, like avoiding my parents mm-hmm. out of the house. Like I realized I'm not an extrovert. I'm actually an introvert. I just hated being at home. Yeah. You know what I yeah, mean? Yeah, so like yeah. I was always out of the house. Like now that I have my whole house, like I don't ever leave my house anymore. Yeah. Right? You know? And so it's like, I look back at it, even even like w- working. Like I used to work so much and mm-hmm. I was like, I'm a hustler. I'm motivated. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. I look back at it. I'm like, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I just had like, it was my addiction. Working was yeah. my addiction because it was my escape. Yeah. It wasn't necessarily like I'm this like hustler and like motivated. And yeah. Nothing that I'm not, but like to the extent that I was working, mm-hmm. I was a workaholic like I yeah. was it was my drug like it was what I escaped into and nobody recognized it because working is considered good right yeah. like achievements are good it's not like Absolutely. I was drinking and like doing drugs or anything like that and so but looking back at it I'm like wow there was so many signs right. so of like yeah. what I was going through and like no one was recognizing it. and because no one else was recognizing it I also wasn't recognized right because like so you true. only know as much as you know so right yeah. or like as much as you're taught mm-hmm. um, um, so that's like another thing. It's like, how do you even recognize that you're going through exactly. it? How do you recognize it? Yeah. I also think for a lot of like Desi girls, you're talking about work kind of being something that was like an addiction. Mm-hmm. I feel like even sometimes marriage yeah. becomes yeah. this source of freedom. Because your whole life exactly. you're told you can only do anything after, after you're married. Get married. And like for the girls that haven't maybe like done things for themselves mm-hmm. and they're in these like homes where they have super overprotective parents that don't let them do anything. Mm-hmm. That is literally what they look for. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. when you're choosing a partner, it also becomes hard because mm-hmm. you don't necessarily choose a partner that is going to fulfill you. Yes. You just choose You're just anyone. trying to find an out. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. You need to leave. You need to experience And a lot life. of times when you're in that situation, 
situation, you end up choosing a partner that's also toxic and you end up in a Absolutely. similar situation exactly. where Absolutely. you just go from like being toxic at your own home to being toxic in someone else's exactly. home, you know? But the difference with that is then there's also the pressure of like, I don't know if I can leave now. Mm-hmm. You know what that's I mean? So you just stay. Stuck. You're, you're stuck and you, mm-hmm. you're stuck and you stay. Yeah. So like, I just feel like there's so much, um, if you don't get the help you need, yeah. right? Yeah. Let's say you don't recognize it. Yeah. People don't talk about it because they want to keep it a taboo topic mm-hmm. because, oh my God, God forbid that someone says that they need therapy. Mm-hmm. Okay. You, you, it just leads to like so many bigger problems. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's so important that you talk about it. It does. It's like a domino effect. Oh my God. It's such a domino effect. And I feel like, I don't think people understand how like life altering it is when you actually seek the help that you need yeah you know what's really scary about it though is like so when I started going to therapy and I don't know if you've experienced this but it was like I took my rose colored glasses off and my whole world shattered in front of me oh my god and that was so scary because I was like my whole life was a lie yeah Mm. I was like and I think that's another reason a lot of people avoid therapy because they don't want to face the reality of it right and like they want to be in denial and they and i think uh, like one thing i always say is like sometimes you've been in the dark for so long Mm -hmm. that the light hurts your eyes like Mm -hmm. it just like you when you see that light you're just like i don't want it i don't want want it it because Mm -hmm. it hurts it's like you you don't know what to do Mm -hmm. right like you and obviously your eyes adjust to the light after a while but it takes time yeah, yeah. and we yeah. haven't seen the light it's yeah. scary it is scary and so like i think that's uh, what happened to me with therapy too it was it was such a scary journey of like unpacking things that i'm like i didn't even know this was a problem mm-hmm. i didn't even know this was like a thing or like i didn't even know this affected me mm-hmm. or like subconsciously like i didn't even know this you know what i mean like there's just oh so God, much yeah. to it and i think that's another thing that a lot of people that scares people from therapy they don't want to be told that what they believe or what they've built in their life yeah. mm-hmm. is not real or is a lie or is bad for you or that's so whatever true. it is mm-hmm. and I just have to say with that, like, it is very, very scary to, to, I don't know, come to that truth, I guess. But once you get onto the other side of it, Mm -hmm. it is so life altering that you feel this sense of like weight just lifted Mm -hmm. off of you. And also it gives you this blank canvas to start again, like, and to do whatever you like and and fill that canvas with whatever you wanted, whatever you truly, truly desire. And like, who you are truly meant to be you yeah. know what i mean um but that beginning part is the beginning part is so ugh. daunting i also think it's like scary because you like you know i think some people think that oh you go a couple therapy sessions and you're gonna be fine no and like sometimes you're like, it took like 20 30 years to like get yeah, here honest to god i There's feel no like way. i feel like you you have like a, a therapy session and mm-hmm. you literally sit there after and you're like a mess mm-hmm. like you're just like what did what just happened to I me? Had your day is ruined therapy like, at hard. the beginning of this week on tuesday yeah it took me out for the week like it i was like reliving some of my trauma like yeah. i was like telling some of the stories because like it your mind can't tell whether you're in it or not right yeah. like it just you're it just you're bringing up the emotions and so you're reliving it right yeah. your mind thinks you're there and so um it took me out for the week because i was like retelling some of these stories yeah. and after that i have never felt so drained yeah. in my life like i was just like mentally and physically just done like i pretty much i did like the bare minimum amount of work that i could yeah. do this yeah, week because yeah. i just i couldn't like mm-hmm. it's it was a lot um but i find when you have those sessions and you've worked through them again just so life-altering like really it's is. just like you can't go back and you can't you look back at your life and you're like how did i ever live like this? I yeah swear, that's so true you know like so so true it's insane it's so true i think i honestly think to your point like everyone should try it mm-hmm. um especially like i can i can say it in the sense of like i'm a desi girl and i know that like collectively we've all gone through like some level of trauma mm-hmm. and i think it really does um change you for the better in so many ways it's also very helpful for you especially like i have kids and i just want to know that like 
I've, I'm doing my part to be the best version of myself for my children. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And like, even if you don't have kids, mm-hmm. to be the better, best version of yourself for you. For you. And for anyone else that comes and in your people, life. people, yeah, around you, yeah, right? Because like re- you really like do affect the people other. around you Absolutely. with their trauma without you even realizing Absolutely. that you're doing it. Absolutely. So like, even yeah. what you were saying about like, maybe inviting friendships into your life and then also kind of being maybe in a headspace that was not healthy Mm -hmm. and then having those types of friendships, I think you really learn to set boundaries for yourself and respect and love yourself Mm -hmm. through it. That's the biggest thing. It is. Okay, moving on to the second question because again, here we go off on tangents (laughs) as usual. We love our tangents. I know this is a question everyone's going to want answered. How hard is it or how hard was it when you were going to tell your parents about your current hubby? Oh my God. I literally (laughs) wanted to throw up. Like it was... (laughs) I remember I couldn't even tell them. First of all, there was yeah. there was so much like growing up, my parents were so anti men or like anti boys, anti boyfriend. Uh, but it was weird because it wasn't really like that with my older sister. Okay. Um like my older sister had guy friends, but like when it came to me, I'm not sure if it was like Cause like my older sister's also a little bit more um, introverted. Like she's she's okay. like a little bit more to herself, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And I'm definitely more extroverted than she is. Mm-hmm. And I definitely um, just I think with like my personality and who I am, get a lot of attention, mm-hmm. right? And so I think that scared my parents mm-hmm. a lot. Mm-hmm. And obviously, I I grew up like like this like skinny pretty ish girl Mm -hmm. um and so it was like I would just get get this attention Mm -hmm. right and um I think that really scared my parents and so there was always these conversations of like you can't talk to boys like Mm -hmm. none like don't do that like and so I I felt so terrified to like bring boys around my yeah Yeah, like my older sister had like guy friends she brought them around like my parents never said anything I didn't even introduce my first guy friend I think I think my friend Narvir was my first guy friend and he's like 10, 15 years older than me. Yeah. We mm-hmm. work together because like he's a photographer. Yeah. And he was like my the girl that I did makeup with, mm-hmm. it was her cousin. So it yeah. wasn't like it wasn't like uh like this and he was like married, had like, like kids. Like, yeah, it was like, it was like someone that yeah. was like like could not have a relationship yeah. with yeah, me, yeah, right? Yeah. And so that was the first guy that I kind of introduced to my my family because he was like photographing like an event of ours yeah um and then after that was my husband yeah and mm-hmm. that's like in my 20s like I had gone through like te- like you know what I mean yeah, and there totally. was like times also in my younger like my parents would spy on me like I remember um my mom like I came home from school one day and my mom was like so who are those boys you were talking to on the hill what? like first on of the all hill. On the <laughs> hill. how did you know that <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah <laughs> And I was like, okay, I'm sure she got my neighbor to spy on me. Yeah. But it was like, so I just constantly felt like. You're being surveilled. Yeah. Being surveilled. Yeah. surveilled. <laughs> yeah. There was another time I was like on MSN and like I was like talking to a guy again, like platonic. Yeah. Right. But like my dad had been standing behind me and I didn't oh know. Oh my gosh. And then my dad's like, who is that? And then oh, I. It's a girl. It was like control space. I don't know if you guys had that where it yeah. was just minimize yeah, everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right? And my dad's like, who is that? Where, like, where is that? And I'm like, there's nothing here. Like, what are you it was, talking It was my about? friend from. Yeah. From school named J- John. From John Monica. there. <laughs> also, how many times have we gotten cell phones oh and god. all the guys' names are actually like? Oh my god! Girl oh, names? My, that was another thing. So my dad had he would get printed copies of our phone logs. Wow! And he would go through them and he called the number. Stop! And are you so serious? I swear, he oh called. My god. That was another thing that was like very quick thinking of yeah. like. So my dad like called one of my my exes like his number because <laughs> obviously his. Yeah, number kept showing up yeah. on, my, on my call log, right? And so he called it, and he was like, "So who's this person you keep calling?" And I was like, "Oh, I, I, I was like, I think it's like my friend. I was like, maybe it was her brother that picked up, blah blah." blah. And then I like had to quickly change the name in my phone, and mm-hmm. then I like called, and I was like, "Get your brother to pick up." Mm-hmm. And so, or like, I was 
like telling my friend to get her brother to yeah. pick up. And like, yeah. it was like all this stuff. So I had to like call in front of my dad. Mm-hmm. I like made, like made it, ha- you know what I mean? And yeah. so it was just, yeah, just make it happen. And so like, it was like this constant anxiety yeah. of like being around boys or not being able to have a relationship with boys. Yeah. So I couldn't, like, I remember I took my sister to like a cafe and I was like, you know, I need to tell mom and dad about this. Like I'm like ready to get engaged and all yeah. this stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I was like shaking and like crying in this like cafe, and I was like, it is scary. It was, it's I was so scary. Terrified. Yeah. And then like my sister's like, hey, my sister's a real one. Shout out to my older sister. But like, shout out she, sister. Yeah, she she was like, don't worry. Like I'll tell them. Yeah, I love that. And I was like, okay, so. We planned it around a time where I left Mm -hmm. for, I had to leave to Mexico for a work trip. So she told them while I was in Mexico to give them some time to like. Process. (laughs) Yeah. Process. Marinate in it. Um, And then I came back. It was good timing because I came back and like two days later I had to go back to Mexico for another work trip. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have to spend like. Too, too much, much time, time with yeah. them yeah you know it was very like very quick yeah, um yeah. and so yeah like i remember coming back i literally wanted to throw up i was like oh so God. anxious oh. and i just like was like jittery and then my parents never brought it up okay and then my dad was driving me to the airport and i was like do i bring it up like do i say something it was like the most awkward car ride yeah. to the airport and I like brought it up and I'm like trying to like talk about how great of a guy yeah. he is mm-hmm. and stuff. And my dad's like, okay, we'll just talk about it when you get home. And I was like, this <laughs> Don't is like, do this to me. I know. I'm like, why would you do that? Cause like now that's all I'm thinking oh about while God. I'm in Mexico, like, yeah, you know? Me now. <laughs> Honestly. It was so the scary. worst because I'm like, I don't want them to know that I like like boys. I know. Yeah. I know. Oh I know. That's that weird. is a lot yeah and then it's also like what is the reaction gonna be because obviously i told them because i'm serious about this exactly. guy 100 and like what if they don't like him and then what and and my issue was too is like he wasn't gujarati he yeah. was Sri Lankan, so like i knew that they were gonna have a problem with anyone that wasn't gujarati yeah so i'm like okay now there's that added layer to stress. it yeah, of exactly. like yeah the stress of like and like I the difference in like culture 100%. and all that stuff yeah. and and this also was happening around the time when i was having all these health problems oh my gosh too. so i'm like oh my god like this is just like it was just a lot to One take thing on after another. yeah it just yeah. felt like that those three years of my life were just like domino effects of like straight like just one bad thing oh after another and i was like okay let's just kind of get this out. and then and then my parents, I think, surprisingly took it way better than I expected them yeah, to. Wow. Um, I think because of my sister. Again, shout out to my sister. I love that. Because, like, my sister, I think, really um, calmed them down. Yeah. And at this point, my sister had been... Has she been? Mar- yeah, she had been married. Mm-hmm. Um, so like I think they they viewed her as more of an adult. Yeah. 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 She's like, oh, she knows more now. She's a she's a wife. So, yeah. um, they she my sister was just kind of like you know be easy on her. Like she's already going through so much. Blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. So my parents took it way better than I had expected yeah, them to, which was that. thank God. Um. <laughs> Cause I think that would have, that, that would have been my 13th reason. Like, I feel yeah. like that was, it was a lot to take in, For sure. but they, they definitely weren't accepting of it at first. Yeah. Mm. Um, but my dad was like, you know, why didn't you tell me that you were dating? I'm like, are you insane? <laughs> right. Why would How I do you tell have a conversation you? like that? Why would I have dad? a conversation with you? Hi, dad. I like boys. Yeah. Like, oh, wait, like, uh, like, I like, would never let me go out before. Right? Now I'm going to go out with and a like, boy. Literally, Can you imagine the you reaction. Know, you know Come what's on. crazy? Even after I had told them, I still lied about going out with him oh. because I was like, I feel weird. I feel weird. It's just muscle say? memory, girl. It muscle memory. It is muscle memory. Like, it was so fun. I so can't. Funny. It was. It was like. No, I'm like. No, I'm not going out with my. I'm never seeing him again. What are you talking about? I told you. I told you each other on the wedding. At the wedding. Yeah, on the wedding day. Hundred <laughs> percent. So, so funny. It was just. It was like very, very weird. But they, my dad was like, you know, I could have set you. We have this like Gujarati community called like a samaj. That's what yeah. we call it. And so, um, he's like, I, he's like, why didn't you tell me you wanted to like meet someone? He's like, I know people in the samaj. And I was like. Okay, first of all, it's not like I'd never tried dating like a drafty yeah, guy. Yeah. Like, you know, it would be nice to be married to a good yeah. guy because like similar culture, similar of course, upbringing, yeah. it makes it does make it easier. Yeah. But I'm like, we just never I like, I just never vibed with them. Yeah, right. Yeah, and totally. so it is what it is. Mm-hmm. Right. And this just happens to be the guy that I vibe with. Um, 
but I'm like, you just like wanted me to like hoe around in <laughs> the summer. I'm like, how is that any better? <laughs> like, that's so oh weird. God. Here's my daughter. She's single. Yeah. <laughs> like, what if it didn't work out? Then we're like the talk of that right? Time. Like, and then that's like a and whole that's other so pressure. That's so yeah. yeah. So true. Yeah. So true. Yeah. So true. So oh, like, and then if you go on a bad date and the guy goes and snitches to his mom. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And then everybody's just going to be talking about Everyone that. knows that's your business. Talks. And you're like, oh, did you know what she did? The toxic sons, too. Do you know she expected my son to pay? Oh, so your son weird. better pay. Your son <laughs> better pay. Your son better pay. <laughs> she said what she said. Oh, my God. It's just, I was like, that's weird. I was like, I don't know if I could just, like, be the Samaj ho. Like, I'm, I'm like, I'm sorry. Because, like, you know damn well it's not going to be, like, the first guy you date. Yeah. You I'm know. Sure. Oh, and yeah. so, like, you, you, I'm like, I don't really want to do that. That's yeah. weird. And at this point, I'm like, I already met my person. So, like, what, what's true. the issue? That's so true. You know? And like, I feel like once you meet your person, you meet your person. Yeah, you your person. exactly. Yeah, I agree. So, yeah. But, like, you know, I'm, I'm glad that, like, it wasn't as bad as you thought it was. I'm yeah. so that thankful so happy yes. for that. Because I feel oh like there's God. situations where it blows up. Yeah. Yes. And then it's it just puts the worst taste in your mouth. For really? me, I was, like, to my dad, like, there was, like, a lot of times where I was just, like, you have, I'm, like, you can't make your decision without meeting him. Like, you yeah. have to meet you have him to. first. You have to. I was like, you like, like I'm like, the you benefit want, of the doubt. Yeah, I'm yeah. like, you want to say all this stuff now, but you just have these preconceived notions, yeah. right? Like, just meet him first, and like now he like loves him, and yeah. I'm like, okay, oh. what about me? No, can I? But, <laughs> but can I be honest? I've heard that from so many people where like the parents are not about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then once you're married, they don't care. Yeah, they Everyone don't. Cares. They don't care. All the uh, all the peanut gallery that keeps on adding yeah. their two cents in from the outside Fact. community, they stop caring too because mm-hmm. they moved on to the next person. And guess it's what? It's crazy. Like happily in your own home. Absolutely. You know what I also found crazy though. It's like I wasn't the first one to bring someone into my family that wasn't Gujarati. Yeah. So I'm like, what's the issue what's here? The issue? Absolutely. Like, there's like my cousins are dating outside. My aunts have dated. Like my, yeah. I have like my, I'm like, Dad, your own cousins are married to like yeah. white men. Like, what's the issue yeah. here? Yeah. Like, they're in happy marriages. Yeah. Things are successful for them. They're doing great. Yeah. You love them. Yeah. So I'm like, why can't I? I think for them, it's like, no, but not our children. Yeah, just yeah. not our yeah. Uh, daughter. It's like, okay daughter? for everyone else daughter? to do it, but not my daughter. Don't bring shame to yeah. the family name. Literally, I'm like, literally everyone else is dating outside. So like, why can't I date outside of the I just think they have to be more accepting that like the world is a vast yeah. place. Yeah. Okay? There are good people out there. For real. Like not everybody. And, and to that, I also say like sometimes within your community, like people are shady. Oh, so you shady. I mean? Sometimes. <laughs> Let's be real. There was like a guy that was like in our community. We used to go to his house because he had a Monday in his house, like a yeah. really, really big one. He mm-hmm. was like a brahman or something i don't know but he had him on there in his house we used to go there all the time and later on we found out that he was like abusing his daughter-in-law and he got arrested and i was like oh my god daughter-in-law yeah yeah why do i want to throw up in my mouth right now like Insane. Ew. I Honest was like, we God. used to go to the Monday at his house. That's that is so crazy. like, and so I'm like, you're saying like, like not every Gujarati person is gonna be amazing. Is that, yeah, like, yeah. It's like it's more about the person mm. themselves. It's about the person. I'm glad he gave him a chance. He, yeah. Did. yeah, he met him and he got to know him. I, I, I give credit to that. Yeah, yeah. There are good and bad people in all. There are good and bad. Exactly. But I honestly think give give the give people the benefit of the doubt. Also, give your daughters the benefit of the doubt. Mm-hmm. That's like, what I like, said. You know you raise them right. That's yeah. exactly what. I said I'm like do you just not trust me like do you feel like you failed as a parent yeah you know because add to the guilt yeah right (laughs) I'm like so you're saying you're bad at parenting yeah that's what you're saying (laughs) (laughs) but I'm glad it worked out I think that if anything like it's like kind of a lesson for other people too that like have trust in like trust your own gut instincts too when you meet somebody like know what your needs are and like go for it mm, like yeah. if anything if it doesn't work you pivot and you mm. yeah that was else. another thing i said to my family i was like look i'm like if it doesn't work out that's what you're here for Absolutely. like you as a parent are here to give your opinion yeah and i make my decision based off of what i think like based Absolutely. off all the factors that i have considered mm. your opinion being one of them yeah you know but it's not the like end all be all yeah and if things don't work out as a parent it is your job to be there for me yeah, like exactly. that is why you had kids otherwise why did you sign up for this mm. absolutely you know it also comes around to that the whole thing of like 
so what if somebody makes a mistake? Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like our parents don't want us to make a mistake. Yeah. And I understand where it comes from where it's like, I don't want anything bad to happen mm-hmm. to you. Yeah. But you can't live life that way because bad things are going to happen. And you can't keep protecting your kids. Yeah. In like a bubble. you can't yeah. bubble wrap them. Yeah. You just can't. I like, said that to my mom too. Cause I was like, I was like, I don't I'm like, again, knock on wood, but like when you're dead and gone, who's going to be making these decisions? Absolutely. Like you have to trust that I like, and I'm like, if I haven't made my own mistakes or if I haven't like done my own things, then like how am I ever supposed to learn? Absolutely. You know? And if you don't make those mistakes, you don't really gain any of that life experience. Yeah, that you need. exactly. And yeah. then you're like 40, 50 years old, not knowing how to navigate. Yeah. Anything. anything. Absolutely. Anything. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, thank you so much for sharing. We had a great time. Such Some a great, great time. laughs. I feel like it was a great dynamic. I know you guys felt it. (laughs) We know you felt it too. Yeah. Um, And please continue to do what you're doing. Girl, honestly, I love the And you guys too. I feel like you guys are having really important topics on this um, podcast as well. And it just makes me so happy to see two brown girls just killing it. (laughs) And... You know, talking out about things that Absolutely. need to be talked yeah. about. We really, it's really, important. really appreciate it. Truly. Um, for all of you guys, we already said Himali's socials are already going to be posted here, but we know you're already following. Right? And if you're not, why aren't you? Exactly. Get with it. Get with the program. <laughs> Get with the program. <laughs> um, thank you so much for tuning in to our episode. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, follow us and give us a five-star rating on Spotify, <laughs> please. Um, it works wonders for us. And follow us on socials, TikTok and Instagram. And Himali, you want, do you want to give your socials actually? Yeah, what? it's just Himali.mystery on Instagram and TikTok and on YouTube, but I'm not really on there. <laughs> okay, sounds good. And we will see you guys next week. Thank you for tuning in. Bye. Bye. Bye.